Hi, everyone. We feeling pumped? Here we go. All right. Life in 2040. My name is Lindsay Smith, and I believe that everybody has a purpose. And I'm fortunate enough to have learned what my purpose is early on. I believe that I am here on this planet to teach people how to embrace technology in these rapidly changing times. You see, technology is everywhere. But today, we're going to talk about technology in a very specific way, a way that is profound, or one industry of technology that is changing in a way that you would not expect. But before I do that, I want to tell you about a story of a little girl that went on a journey through time about 30 years ago. I was seven years old, and I was thrilled to be at the world's largest amusement park, Disney World. And in Disney World, there's a theme park called Epcot Center. And half of Epcot Center is Future World. So exciting. And near the park gates, there is an 18-story geodesic dome. Inside it, a ride called Spaceship Earth. And Spaceship Earth takes you on a journey through time. It takes us back through the history of communication. So there I was, seven years old, about to hop on a time machine and look at communication over the last well, millions of years. There are some crazy and profound historical points in time that have happened. One, Egyptians invented paper on papyrus. Everyone remembers that? Around 3000 AD. What was so magical about that? Why was that technology revolution so important? Well, it meant that we no longer had to go to caves to read written word. We made the written word portable. That was, for me, step number one as a little child, seven years old. Yay, the invention of paper, it all makes sense now. Then we fast forward to 1040 AD with the invention of the printing press. Movable type. All of a sudden, we could tell our stories faster and faster. Then, in the 1900s, television, radio, there was mass communication. Then something magical happened at the turn of the century. The World Wide Web. And it led the path to where we are today. But does anyone remember how the ride, Spaceship Earth, ended back in the 1980s? The future. It depicted a future that we could expect to see 20, 30 years down the road. But at the time, it was unfathomable. Do you know what we saw? Do some of you remember? We saw large, immersive gaming environments. We saw people communicating to other people on the other side of the world through these screens on a wall. We saw doctors talking to their patients within the comfort of their own home through video conferencing. And then at the end, we saw this huge stream of lights going across a city to depict how data travels quickly and instantly so that we can learn and become a global community. 25, 30 years ago, that future seemed unfathomable. But today, it's our reality. In fact, it's been our reality for like a decade. So when I say the year 2040, what does that mean to you? 25 years away is just around the corner. And so I want to talk to you, well, that was, that was the sphere. I'm not catching up with my slides. Now I'm ahead. <laughs> 25 years ago seemed like a long way away. 25 years from now is just around the corner. Now, as we shape our global community, we have to work together, we have to think together. And we see that happening on a global scale. And technology has been at the center of all of that. But let's talk about one thing, one industry within the technology sector that many of us still mistake as sci-fi. 
Because I think we all agree that we embrace technology. We know that we're a global community. But I don't think we understand the prolific changes that are about to come our way. So, change number one. In the year 2040, cars will drive themselves. We see this right now as an, a research and development project. We know that Google has launched their chauffeur program. We know that they have cars on the roads in San Francisco. But what many of you may not realize is that governments are working right now with most of the major automotive um, companies to rework governing classes. They're coming out with a new driver's class for, automated, or for auto, autonomous cars. No steering wheels, no pedals. For some of you, that might be so crazy. How many of you are scared about the idea of driving down the street in a vehicle that you can't control? Well, maybe if you understood how those vehicles worked, you'd feel a little bit better about it. On top of them, they're equipped with a laser beam that takes a 360-degree digital map of their environment. They've got sensors built right into them in order to understand the atmosphere around them. They then take all of that data and map it out against other maps that tell it interesting facts about its environment, such as the speed limit that it should be going. And then from there, you have a safe driver experience. Did you guys know that one out of every three accidents has happened from, happens from distracted drivers? Pretty dangerous. Well, I'm happy to tell you that in the year 2040, we're going to get most of you off the road. <laughs> Change number two, drones will fill the sky. Sounds a little bit crazy. I see some scared faces out there. The reality is, when you look up right now, you might see a plane, you might see a bird. From a consumer level, we see, we see objects like this all around. But again, there are large companies like Amazon and UPS that are working with the US Federal Aviation Administration to basically create rules that will govern safe driving, unmanned pilots flying through the or drones flying through the sky. What will they do? They'll carry packages. They'll surveillance. They'll survey. All sorts of interesting things. But in the future, when you look up in the year 2040, careful one doesn't drop on your head. No, I'm just kidding. It'll be safe. Now, this is my favorite. Meet Baxter. Baxter is a robot, as you can see. But he's a special robot. I like to call him the poster child of artificial intelligence. You see, Baxter's different. Most robots and most drones are programmed to do something very specific. And if you haven't programmed to do that specific thing, like walk around a floor and give it a map in advance, it doesn't know where to go. Baxter doesn't think like that. Baxter's programmed to learn. Baxter was created by the owner, the same guy, the same visionary who created iRobot. Did I scare you? Because I'm not talking about the Will Smith movie. I'm talking about the iRobot uh, cleaners that you use on the floor and to clean windows. Some of you have seen that in the consumer market. Rodney Brooks has been working on Baxter for almost a decade now. The, his purpose is to take over automated jobs, jobs that can be repeated within the factory. Now, what's interesting about Dexter's, not only the fact that he can learn by humans actually moving him around and by him sensing his environment and adapting to that environment. For example, you can see he has expressions. He will communicate with humans based on what he's working on and what we would perceive him to be thinking about so we can understand if he's focused on the factory belt below or if he's reacted quickly to the fact that I'm just about to bump into him. He's responsive that way. But what's also interesting is that Baxter only costs $22,000 US. The average worker in a US factory costs $20,000 or $22,000 US, or that's their annual salary. But what's the difference between Baxter and, a, Baxter and a human? Baxter can work 24-7. Baxter never has 
emotional issues. Baxter never has back issues. He's here to help you. He's at your service consistently. So what does that mean for the human race? If we know that we've got automated cars coming out, we've got or driverless cars coming out, we've got drones that are going to take over potential positions for unmanned aerial vehicles, and we've got robots that are going to take over automated processes within factories and all sorts of jobs, where does that leave us? Well, many economists are predicting that over the next few decades, 45% of the jobs that exist today will not exist in the year 2040 and beyond. Scary? I have good news. All climactic, okay? The good news is, is that every year we eliminate one out of three jobs in North America and we replace it with a new one. It's part of evolution. So evolution is speeding up. The jobs are going to change faster, but we're not going to go into an economic crisis. What is profound, though, and the changes that will happen are the fact that our roles as human beings on this planet are going to change immensely. We have been going and doing and working and doing for years. We do repeated things all the time and we take pride in our ability to do the same thing over and over and over again. And do it better and better and better each time. We're explorers. We're adventurers. But what's going to happen over the next few decades is robots and automation and software are going to take over the automated roles. And where does that leave us? It leaves us with the freedom that we are seeking. It leads us with more leisure time. We get to be critical thinkers. We get to stop being busy bees. And we get to start solving world problems on a global scale. We get to be more educated. Everybody together, working together. But some things have to happen in order for that transition to happen. And that's where I leave it with you today. What are we going to do as a planet, as this new automated workforce comes out? What are you going to do to make sure that you're preparing yourself as a creative and a critical thinker and a strategic player globally? And how are we going to help others along the way that aren't prepared and are scared by the rapid change at which technology is hitting us. Thank you.